we'll have a preview of Kiss Me Kate. We'll find a new angle on the game of chess. And we'll check out the DFW Paw Fest. All this and more coming up about town. Hello everyone and welcome to About Town. I'm Brett Wheeler. And I'm Kathy Whiteman and I am so happy to have ICTN's own Brett Wheeler back in the chair. Yes, I'm very happy to be here. Been a year since I coerced you into doing this before with it's me. It's been a year and it's been a, in a long year it has been since I've been sitting in this chair. But there's been a lot going on in the city of Irving that's kept me busy. You know, everything from, you know, first responders, you know, rib eating contests benefiting charities to you know the entertainment and arts are going on at the Toyota Music Factory there's just so much going here in Irving but I'm happy to be sitting in this chair with you right now I am so glad I'm also happy to say Brett's going to be going to take another look at Racers Reunion that's right yeah. uh, Racer Reunion coming up I, that was another story one of the first stories I did uh, when I was first hired full-time and believe it or not they want me back so. hey how about that yeah. we want you to go back so that's great <laughs> that's well I'm good. thrilled to have you here I'm, I'm happy to be here and we're glad that you came back too <laughs> for a preview of Momentum Dance Company's production of The Nutcracker. We'll also find out who's clowning around with the entertainment series of Irving, and we'll have details on Unite for Troops 2018. As always, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know if there's a community event you'd like to promote on the show or a story that you'd like to see us cover. You can email us at ictn at cityofirving.org or connect with us on social media. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. This month's tour of the Heritage House celebrated our country's veterans with a look at a nearly forgotten battle area of World War II. It was called The Hump, and a longtime Irving resident was a decorated pilot who flew it. Here's a look in this week's Arts Review. For one day only, visitors to the Irving Heritage House learned the story of a hometown hero. Well, my dad's name is Robert L. Willis, and he was a farm boy born in Kansas. And his first fascination with aircraft was the uh, airplanes that used to fly over his farm. That fascination became a career. Willis eventually moved to Irving, but there were many adventures in between. My dad was based in Sukhothing, India, and he would fly supplies for the Chinese war effort under Chiang Kai-shek. Willis's job during World War II was in the CBI, or China, Burma, India Theater. The route the pilots flew to take supplies into China took them over the Himalaya Mountains. The pilots named the passage the Hump. Willis wasn't a fighter pilot, but that doesn't mean his work wasn't just as dangerous. Well, flying over the Himalaya Mountains, most of the time when you're up that high, you have ice on your wings, your engine freezes up, a lot of your instrument panels freeze up and they don't work. So you had to fly without radio connections, you had to fly without navigation of any kind. One third of the pilots that flew the hump didn't come back. Diane's father did come back, and he was recognized for his bravery. She says she hopes visitors who hear his story will be just as inspired by it as she is. It's really to honor my dad and all the pilots that I met through him and any veteran, really coming up on Veterans Day, they have so many stories to tell that nobody asked them to tell. And this is my dad's story. This is Kathy Whiteman reporting. All right. So I can't claim this is accurate, but I personally have a whole new context for the phrase, getting over the hump. The next Heritage House tour is Sunday, December 2nd at 3 p.m. Main Stage Irving Las Colinas continues their season with Kiss Me Kate, a retelling of Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew, complete with a score by musical theater legend Cole Porter. Susan Kamyab brings us this preview. The Broadway show that won the first Tony Award for Best Musical is Main Stage Irving Las Colinas' newest production. Kiss Me Kate is um, uh, two uh, ex husband and wife team that come together to uh, basically reinvigorate their career by uh, doing a musical about Taming of the Shrew. They have a very contemptuous, co contemptuous relationship and All right, Rosie. their lives, Lily and Fred, really parallel Kate and Petruchio, Catherine and Petruchio in The Taming of the Shrew. This volatile relationship that those two characters have well, the, our two lead characters really have that exact same 
relationship. Jeff Wells and Danielle Estes play Fred and Lily, the bickering ex-husband and wife. He's, you know, trying to, trying to be a legit big-time actor, producer, you know, arranger, everything. And so he's just trying to put together the best show he possibly can, and uh, he's got a little bit of an ego problem, possibly, maybe. And um, but uh, but his wife has an anger problem, so they just they're they're uh, they're pretty they're a good team. She's a big Hollywood star, and he's producing it. And so he says, "Hey, come do me a favor." So she goes, and it's supposed to be her final theater performance before she gets remarried. So this is her ex-husband. So that's where there's a little bit of anxiety between the two of them. As the show continues, the two fondly remember the love they once shared and feelings begin to resurface. However, both Lily and Fred are involved with other people, making their reconciliation a challenge. But there's a lot more to look forward to in this show besides this complicated love story. There are so many show-stopping numbers by the cast in this thing. I mean, I can't even, I can't even tell you one moment. There's going to be just like, at least five different numbers in this show that you're going to be like, wow, I can't believe this is coming out of main stage. This is amazing. I've been directing for over 20 years. This is the biggest musical, not the most cast members, the, uh, as far as cast members, but the biggest monster I've ever directed because the music is, you have to have triple threats in all the roles. And this is operetta singing, and, and at the next minute they will be belting out big Broadway numbers. Um, they have to have a gift of the language of Shakespeare. Um, and then there's tons of dancing in the show. Giving audiences many reasons to see this musical. This set the bar for what Broadway became. And so uh, I feel that it's a, if you've never seen Kiss Me Kate, um, uh, it's, it's definitely something to, to witness because it's a big show. There's a lot of people involved. It requires you know, uh, some very talented musicians to put it together. And so a lot of talent is going to be in one place at one time. And, uh, and to see it here in Irving, it's just a, a wonderful convenience for this area. I think it's fun. I think that it's a, it's, there's a lot of laughs, there's a lot of comedy, but then there's a little bit of romance and it's very family friendly. I feel like anybody of all ages could come. All of my nieces and nephews will be here. This is your traditional Broadway musical. I've done nothing. We haven't set it in outer space. We haven't done anything weird to it. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny, um, but it is your traditional musical theater that is heartwarming and just a, a great time. Kiss Me Kate brings the fun and a toe-tapping beat to the theater. For About Town, this is Susan Kamyam. Kiss Me Kate continues through November 17th in the Dupree Theater. Call 972-252-ARTS for tickets and showtimes. Most historians believe that the game of chess originated in India sometime before the 7th century and has become a part of popular culture worldwide ever since. The exhibit currently on display in the Focus Gallery examines the game from the point of view of 21 different artists. Here's a look at playing with chess. There's a history and meaning behind the pieces in chess, and the Irving Arts Center held a special exhibit featuring art related to the notable game. This is called playing with chess because I really want some people to do paintings, some people to do 3D stuff, whatever you as the artist wanted. And really it's a uh, a lot of artists who have just a different idea of what chess looks like and so you know you have all different kinds of various pieces the actual games with figures and everything or that has the theme. It was just fun to see how everyone took it differently. The pieces varied from sculptures, fiber art, glass blowing, mixed media, paintings and more all representing either literal or symbolic interpretations. The queen is actually, in my, my uh, opinion, is probably the more powerful person than the king. And so we have the queen and her knights, and so since it's chess, that's why I use chess pieces. So I just kind of combine all these different little things to produce the idea and the theme of chess. This is mine, and it's called When Bishops Were Monks and Rooks Were Ravens. And I thought, you know, you couldn't become a bishop without first being a monk. And so I wanted something kind of spooky and dark. 
I hand dyed the cloth and that set the tone and the mood. And then, I, doing some research on the history of chess, I heard, I read, where ravens were the original rooks in the first chess sets. And so they became the rooks. And then working with Chase Sharbro, we made it even darker by doing the frame and all. I use found art, found objects, to do a lot of my artwork. And so this piece, this is actually a gas grill that goes into the floor. And then I found this old antique looking frame. And this is part of a shelf. And as you can see, I've got the, the crown of a king here. And then this chess board. Exhibit organizer Future Aikens has a passion for the art of chess, but not the game. The whole reason I made my first chess set is my first major boyfriend, he and his buds in northern Michigan, played chess all the time. And I made a chess set, you know, to get his attention. So I've never learned how to play. I just love the history of chess and love seeing the pieces. And although artist Chase Yarbrough enjoys the game of chess, he loves making art more. You know, I've been doing art ever since I was 14 and 15, and even before. And one of my things early on, when, when I was in uh, eighth and ninth grade, was I would go old warehouses, and I would find weird pieces of metal, rusty things, clocks. And so I just naturally was always doing artwork. And quite honestly, it was probably, I was best at doing artwork than I was anything else. So that's how it just evolved, and now I'm 68 years old and I'm still doing artwork. Playing with chess provided a deeper look into the meaning behind the board game, observing each piece until landing on one creative checkmate. For About Town, this is Susan Kamya. Playing with chess continues in the Irving Art Center Focus Gallery through November 25th. If you've recently found yourself with visions of sugar plums dancing through your head, well, you just might be ready for the annual production of The Nutcracker. Jacqueline Forsher joins us, and for a preview of this year's holiday favorite, welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you. It's great to be here. Always great to have you. So, I know that you've had visions of sugar plums and Russians and et cetera. August. <laughs> That's when we get this rolling, back in August. Well, you've got new people in the cast. We've got some favorites that are coming back. Tell us about it. We do. We have a lot of of new dancers this year. I'm very excited about that. They're very young, but as I've told the company dancers, I think these are the best group of young children that we've ever had. So everything's going swimmingly. Um, we've got uh, our beautiful Emily Dixon Alba coming back with Shay Johnson. I think this is about his eighth or tenth year. And then our Drosselmeyer is a returnee from last year, Chris Edwards. He's wonderful, funny, and delightful to have around. Well, it's just magical to watch that show come together. It mm, really is. It is. And I know that even after all these years, you still get that little, oh, it's happening. I do. <laughs> I do. I like making little changes every year. My favorite, of course, is the end of the party scene, and I cracked myself up this year, so I'm hoping that everybody else has the same effect on that. It's oh. always different. The grandmothers <laughs> were like, we were watching old videos, and I said, no, it's never the same. It's got to be different every single year. 14 years, wow. it's never been the same. My gosh. And you know, the Nutcracker is a tradition for a lot of families in Irving to come year after year. What are some of the things that maybe you can let us in on as far as things that can happen this year? Um, well, we're, we're on Thanksgiving weekend, which has really turned out to be a blessing because everybody's families come, come in to see the children, their children dance, as well as the ballet company. Uh, the company gets to switch up roles every year. They really enjoy doing that. Um, we have the opening night reception, which is great for everybody to breathe the relief that we've gotten going. <laughs> and yes. then the Sugar Plum Fairy reception, when uh, some of the dancers go out in costume and the children get to meet their idols and get autographs and of course attack the candy bar. That's the big one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Count me in for that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, the adults also, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> So you have done some outreach in the past into Irving ISD. Are you doing that again this year? We are so lucky. It's our third year and our second year back at the Irving Art Center and we're hitting 11 of the 20 elementary schools. We have the third grade class and we're doing two each day. We have three shows. It's tying in with the Garth Williams um, art gallery over in the Dupree side of the theater. So the children who I hope will come see the full production will get a little taste of the workings of Nutcracker as well as the Nutcracker Suite. So it's great for them and um, very, very important pet project of mine. So I'm very happy to have that continue. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a really great deal. And so if you wanted to, if 
families wanted to go out and see the Nutcracker this year, can we still get tickets or tickets still available? Absolutely. Available? You can get them at 972-252-ARTS, mm -hmm. irvingartscenter.com, or just visit the box office. The shows are the 23rd and 24th of November at 7.30, and then uh, the 25th at 1.30, and the reception, the Sugar Plum Fairy reception follows that show. It's going to be a lot of fun again this so. year. Folks, remember the telephone number to call is 972-252-ARTS. It's all happening Thanksgiving weekend. Call in and get your tickets. The new comedy, Instant Family, is based on the real-life events of writer-director Sean Anders. It revolves around a married couple who decide to start a family by fostering not one, but three children. Here's Susan Kamiop with more. I love what you two are doing with this house, but what are you gonna do with five bedrooms? You guys are obviously never having kids. What was that look? I did not do a look. You're doing a look right now. There's no look. Have a good fight, guys. There's so many kids in foster care, and they're having an orientation. Ellie, people who take in foster kids are really special. The kind of people who volunteer when it's not even a holiday. We don't even volunteer on a holiday. Over a half million children are currently in foster care. The county puts these on because they can match a lot of kids and parents quickly. Look at the big kids. Everybody's avoiding them. I'm gonna go and say hi. But they're teenagers, okay? They use drugs and they watch people playing video games on YouTube. We're not equipped for any of that. Hi! Just FYI, we can all hear you. Hmm? It's okay. Go mingle with the kitties and uh, don't give it another thought. Bye-bye. She was cool. In the film, uh, you know, Pete and Ellie, they kind of touch on the fact that they went back and forth on deciding when they wanted kids. And yeah. Which obviously, you know, they, that's why they say the whole thing about like, we should adopt a five-year-old and kind of yeah. seem like we started it <laughs> five years ago. But when, when do you think is the right time to start having kids, whether you're adopting or conceiving? <laughs> I always thought that I had this magic number in my head when I was younger that I wasn't going to start a family until I was 35 was, was my number. And I think that was mostly because I wanted to just get as much out of my youth as I could before I was going to be a dad. And uh, I didn't become a dad until I was 40, 41. And, um, and I think what was good about that is I was a little bit more mellow and maybe a little smarter than I was. <laughs> but I, I think I didn't have the, as much energy. So I think it's different for everybody. I've known some people that have started really young um, the way that they used to do it, you know, and have, have done really well. And I think the idea of your kids going to college when you're still a relatively young person is kind of great. I'm not going to have that experience. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know that there's a right time for anyone. But... Right. Yeah. I would like my kids to not do it too soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just live your life a little bit. Have some fun <laughs> while you're young, you know, before you jump into that. Lizzie comes with two younger siblings. Three kids? Too much. Oh, oh my God. God. They're adorable. Why would you show us that? That's wrong. Here we are. Make yourself at home because you're at home. Do you like the Clippers? Oh, I'm more of a Lakers fan. Oh, no! You hit me because I like the Clippers! I think the Clippers are awesome. They were smart for trading Blake Griffin, their best player. I did think it was really cute when Pete and Ellie were, like, overthinking whether or not they should give the kids a, a good night kiss. Yeah. Um, was there anything that you and your wife, something small, that you guys just overthought while you were going through the uh, adoption process and you look back now? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, that, you know. But, no, there were, there were so many things that... I, I think what's funny is that the when you don't have kids, you think you're a you think you're going to be a really amazing parent, and then when you do have kids, it's such a weird contradiction because I think most parents have these conflicting thoughts of that they feel like my values, the way I'm raising my kids, is the right way, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they have this feeling of like I'm a complete disaster and I don't know what I'm doing, and there aren't that many areas in life that are that are like that, so. We started out like that. I think we we got a little bit better at it as we went, but I, we're still just making mistakes left and right. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. There's everyone. It's they've got their own method. I mean, there's no right or wrong way. Yeah, we try to have fun with the mistakes. Is that, yeah. that's kind of our <laughs> philosophy. Is as much as we can try to have fun with all the things that we're screwing up, and you know, let the kids' future therapists deal with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This stuff takes time. Lizzie yeah. had to parent Juan and Lita all by herself. This is never going to be easy, but with some structure and love, you could make your house a home. What I love about this movie and what is so relatable about it is that ultimately it's about family and parenting. What do you think is the best part about being a parent? Um, 
I mean, you know, it's the obvious things. It's it's just the to come in the door and get those hugs from your kids, to celebrate with them when they're when they achieve something, you know, to to help them out when they're having a hard time with something. Um, you just get such great feels from from all of it, and and that's you know, and that brings me to another point that people constantly talk about like, oh, it's such a good thing that people do for these kids kind of thing, that it's all like in one direction. It's not that way at all. I get so much back from my kids that it, it was a great deal for me, you know? And so, and then and then the other one that, that, that I do love is that as a dad, they're, they're almost contractually obligated to laugh at your jokes. And, and the worst joke, or the, the the worse the jokes are, the better. They, they, they love like the worst jokes ever. So that's fun for me. There's no pressure like out in the world when I'm trying to write jokes. Yeah, well, <laughs> dad jokes. Dad, dad jokes, jokes are the best. Dad jokes are the best. <laughs> Instant Family is now playing at AMC Irving Mall and Regal MacArthur Marketplace. Somebody's been clowning around with the entertainment series of Irving's next show. Those somebodies are Dick Monday and Tiffany Riley, Irving's favorite clowns. And they're here to tell us all about the all-star variety cabaret. Welcome. It is great to see you guys. It's good to be here. It's yeah. been a while. And I have to say, you two clowns, because, you know, why miss that opportunity when the door is right there? <laughs> Walk right I can repeat in. the same way, Kathy, but I won't. <laughs> it's very good to see you as well. It's so, very delightful. for folks in town who don't know about you guys, can you tell us what's, what's the New York Goofs? Um, well, the New York Goofs is a company of clowns and physical comedians and circus performers that we started when we lived in New York and kind of carried it here when we moved to Dallas. And we've been doing shows all over, all over for like 20 years, coming on 20 years. Yeah. So we're bringing all of those uh, lovely, talented, crazy people to the Irving Arts Center to do a show. And I want to ask you about, and I think it's the Laughter League, mm -hmm. sort of your umbrella organization. Yeah. Tell us how that works. So the Laughter League is our um, nonprofit organization whose mission is to improve the lives of the families we serve through the transformational power of laughter. Ah, uh, yes. We do that in education, in the schools. Uh, we do that in hospitals. We have professional healthcare clowning programs in a number of hospitals now, and we do it by performing and inspiring laughter. Well, I can tell you, having worked with you guys, I, I just have to confess that I look at you and I start laughing. It has nothing to do with how you look. It's all about how what wonderful performers you are. Thank you. Although you can look kind of funny sometimes too. Just saying. <laughs> Now this performance is a bit of a departure for the for the for the series. Uh, what can people look forward to for this event? Well, I think uh, we all have a little love affair. Some of us who are uh, a little bit seasoned with variety entertainment, you know, and we've seen it rediscovered on TV now with those you think you can dance and you know uh, all of the they're basically variety shows, America's but got they yeah. Yeah, they they kind of have re-schooled them a little bit. It's not like Arthur Godfrey or Ed Sullivan, but. What we do is really bring together uh, all kinds of talent with the basis being it's got to be funny, funny, family friendly, exciting, visually exciting, and musical. We, we dance, we play uh, a variety of musical instruments, we hang from the rafters on trapezes, <laughs> and we've got uh, very excited. We have a, a tap company called Choreo Records, and they're really a fabulous tap company. So we'll see an ensemble of tappers, uh, as well as juggling. Uh, I play the musical saw in the show. but um, And a gifted concert pianist as well. well yes. Us, so. oh. We're, we're going to base our show around uh, uh, Chiago, who is uh, a concert pianist and uh, Thiago Nascimento, and he will be uh, playing live with us. Um, we've been doing a, a cabaret series around Dallas for the last three years, and so we've uh, established kind of a, a nice uh, a group of people that we work together with, along with the, a live piano player, as well as tracks that we'll play. But I'm really looking forward to this show. Because of course, too. it's right here in Irving. Absolutely. I've been looking forward to it since I heard you guys were going to be doing this. And I just want to kind of throw in here before we close up, because we need to wrap this up. Um, I, I happen to know because someone mentioned to me that a part of that tap group is someone that you guys may know. Yeah, we've known her for about since she was born. <laughs> okay, we're going to go with that. It's our daughter, Lily, and um, she has uh, actually become a really incredible tap dancer. She's really pursuing it. And I think. For me, one of the great things about watching her dance is when, like, my parents happen to be in the oh. audience, and you know they are dancers, and I can see them watching her with such 
pride and such happiness that somebody has continued the dancing and she she really she really does it she's kind of a good mix of the two of them she's got you know joy riley's kind of fast steps and dale's panache oh yeah because <laughs> there's yeah. nobody like dale riley nobody no, that's right. <laughs> but you know it, it's impossible not to smile while you're watching tap dancing that's true it just is so engaging you know and that's a, the theory behind everything we do is let's engage our audience and bring a smile well, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So for those audience who want to be engaged, how can they get tickets? <laughs> mm, that would be the Irving Arts Center. Yes, it would be. <laughs> Folks, you can go to theirvingartscenter.com or call 972-252-ARTS. This fabulous show, the All-Star Variety Cabaret featuring the New York Goofs and all of their friends, is presented by the Entertainment Series of Irving. That's going to be on Friday, November 16th at 7.30 p.m. in Carpenter Performance Hall. Call now and get your tickets or I'm going to buy them all. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Just be the show for me. Let's and fill Brent. it up. Absolutely. Let's fill yeah. it up. If you haven't heard it by now, please take note. Little and cute goes a long way. Witness the toddler asking Alexa to play Baby Shark. Two billion views and climbing. Well, the same thing applies to puppies and kittens. The folks at the Video Association of Dallas certainly understand how the world works, so they brought back the DFW Paw Fest by popular demand. Susan Kamyab brings us these highlights. The Texas Theater was visited by some furry friends during their annual Paw Fest, which featured a hundred cat and dog videos created by local filmmakers. I'm a filmmaker, I'm a local Dallas filmmaker, so this is my third year doing the festival. I had my Instagram cat mom was a film in the festival last year, so, and then the trailer was in the year before that, so. I just love, I love art and cats and animals, so anything arts, cat, animals in Dallas, I'm I'm in. The lobby filled up as guests mingled with pets and filmmakers before the show got going. Among those participating in the festival was MacArthur High School alum, Brady Talk. At the Dallas Paw Fest, we have a video screening and it's System of a Puppy, which is a parody of System of a Down's uh, Chop Suey. The video it has a bunch of sock puppets that are basically recreating System of a Down's image and there's a bunch of dogs that are attacking them. And so instead of chop suey, we call it sock chewy. So basically it's about how dogs tear up socks. And it's just a comedy video and we had a lot of fun making it. And one of the best parts of making this film was the sponsorship from the East Lake Pet Orphanage. They came and brought a litter of puppies to our set and everyone absolutely lost their mind because they were so cute and adorable. And it was just so good to know that um, by them feeling with us, we could put their name out there and hopefully get dogs adopted or in some way uh, help those dogs find a new home. Brady's passion for creative arts and filmmaking ignited while attending MacArthur. In MacArthur High School, I basically took um, my advanced art class, my advanced theater class, and turned it into a hodgepodge of film class. So I do storyboards in, in art uh, with Mrs. Strauss back then. And um, in theater, I would basically make a set or paint stuff, and we would just film stuff all the time. So we had a lot of fun. We made it. To, we we were able to turn it into a curricular exercise, so the teachers allowed it. And uh, just me and my my friends basically would have a lot of fun making films. As audience members took their seats, the presentation began, and the crowd sat back and watched the hilarious stylings of various pets on screen. The DFW Paw Fest was a perfect way for local filmmakers to express their talents and show off their work. I mean, work. I just love that we have festivals in Dallas so often. The film community is a tight-knit, beautiful community, and I'm extremely um, happy that um, my community, Irving, has helped me achieve success in the, in the realm of filmmaking. For About Town, this is Susan Kamyam. Seriously adorable, am I right? To learn more about fun events sponsored by VAD, the Video Association of Dallas, visit them online at videofest.org. Irving gathers the second Saturday of November to honor those who have served our country in the armed forces. The event is called Unite for Troops. It's the brainchild of Sydney Porter, and she joins us with this details on this year's event. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm always so glad to see you. You know this. I oh, think everybody I love knows this. <laughs> so you have been a busy lady this year. I have seen you in so many places, but specifically, the, you were all over the 4th of July celebration this year. Absolutely, it was so wonderful on the day of our independence to be honoring and supporting those who are keeping us independent. 
and yeah. free. Yeah. And being able to collect supplies and letters and and get those over to the troops, it meant a tremendous amount to them, especially during the summer. Yeah, well, you've, you've made this Unite for Troops things more of a, a year-wide effort than just a single day. Right, and the scope, just from talking with you, seems like it's gotten bigger. Uh, how is, what about the commitment for the troops that, are, that you guys are serving? The uh, troops that we're serving right now, there are over 40 FOBs, that's the front operating bases, guys on the front lines, they're in the most desolate and desperate areas um, and they're completely worldwide. Uh, we are getting more requests for support. So that's why we expanded to a full 501c3. So now we can come to your house <laughs> and work with anyone anywhere to have more opportunities for people to donate supplies, to write letters, and to just to let our troops know that what they're doing it matters everything to us. Yeah, and it's so important to get that message out. Absolutely. It's so important to get that message out. So in addition to the support that you give the troops, I just have to say having come for several years in a row, it is so much fun. What all's going on day of the event? Well, we have, I, if, no, if no one has ever heard live a big band orchestra, the Joshua Experience shows at three o'clock with patriotic big band music, plus we have two more rock bands, and then at noon we have our Veterans Appreciation with speakers, and the flag retirement. So if you have That's used, torn and ceremony. tattered mm -hmm. flags, bring them. And those will be retired to the fire by our veterans. And any ones that are nylon that cannot be fired, go to the funeral homes and they are retired when a veteran is being cremated. Then we have yeah. lots of food, everything from hamburgers and barbecue to turkey legs and homemade ice cream. We've got games and bounce houses and everything for the kids are free. I heard a little rumor about a mechanical bull. Absolutely, this will be the <laughs> first time. Yes, I've been wanting something fun like that. <laughs> so we're gonna have that and the cornhole pitch and just a lot of things to do all day. So Britt, are you ready? Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think sign me up for the bull. I think I'll be the first one to get on. <laughs> uh, so for people who maybe don't wanna do the bull but wanna help in other ways, how can they get, get involved? Well, our event is literally a World War II event. It is when everybody around the community just wants to do something for our troops and veterans. So we arrange this one day, so everyone is volunteer, everything is donated. And if anyone, we'd love to have you come out. If you do, please bring supplies, because those will be sending over right after the first of the year. And you can uh, go to our website at uniteforttroops.com and you're welcome to volunteer. This is your event going on. You're welcome to, if you want to get involved in any way. Uh, people who own a party company donate bounce houses. So whatever blessings you feel like our troops have provided you and you want to be part of honoring them, just let us know. We'd love to have you. A traditional hometown, World War II era kind of event to get the whole community out and supporting our troops. I love this, absolutely love this. Folks, if you want to be a part of the fun day, you can go to Porter's Army Navy store at 600 East Irving Boulevard, right there on Porter Way, yeah. at Irving Boulevard and Porter Way. Uh, fun kicks off Saturday, November 10th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if you want to come and make a donation, you can do it there. If you want to bring supplies for the troops, you can do that there as well. Find out more at UniteForTroops.com. And here are some other inspired things to do happening about town. Cookbook lovers unite. The Valley Ranch Library is sponsoring Cook the Book, a cooking book club where attendees prepare and share recipes. Stop by the Valley Ranch Library reference desk to register, pick up your recipe, and get ready for the main event on Saturday, November 10th from noon to 1 p.m. Call 972-721-4669 for more information. Center Park is sponsoring a Veterans Day lunch on Wednesday, November 14th from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. for folks 55 and older. The event is to say thank you to those who have served. Lunch is $4 and veterans eat free. Call 972-721-2641 for more information. The Las Colinas Symphony Orchestra presents Leanne Thompson in performance Saturday, November 17th at 7.30 p.m. in Carpenter Performance Hall. Call 972-252-ARTS for tickets. And good news for working parents. Irving Parks and Recreation has a Thanksgiving break camp for kids kindergarten through fifth grade. Camp runs November 19th through the 21st from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Register online at cityofirving.org slash 
Parks and Recreation. Click on the online registration tab and that wraps up this edition of About Town. Thanks for joining us. Please be sure to tune in next time for a special edition of the show when we'll bring you details on some of the many events going on around our city. We'll have details on family activities, volunteering opportunities, and just ways to have some holiday fun. We'll leave you tonight with a look at the new Philharmonic Orchestra of Irving in concert on October 14th. For About Town, I'm Kathy Whiteman. And I'm Brett Wheeler. Have a great evening, About Town.